Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In the previous video, we learned about how to display all of the posts and make a request to get these posts and also add the load more button. Uh, currently, it isn't doing anything. So now we're going to write the JavaScript to make an Ajax call and get the subsequent posts. So first thing we're going to do is head over to our theme. I'm going to go into asset source and inside of JS, I've created a folder called posts and inside of that we have load more more.js. If you remember from the previous video, we already created this file, right? Okay. So I'm going to paste a code snippet and then I'll explain to you what this does. All right. And then I'm going to import this file into our main.js. And if you remember, we have already imported this file into our main.js and this file is already enqueued. So if you go to classes, if you go to class assets, you can see that the main.js file is already enqueued, which means this file will already be available uh, onto the front end. Okay, so now let's run a development server, npm run dev, and I'm, I notice that I'm inside of the assets directory, which is where our package.js on file is. Okay, so now let me explain to you what's happening here. This is our if statement. Then we have created a class called load more. And then inside of that, we have a constructor method. And then we're just saying new load more. So when you do new load more, which is when you instantiate this particular class, then the constructor function will be called and everything that we're doing over here uh, will be executed. So the first thing we do is we create a variable. So we're doing the object oriented programming, which is the one of the best ways of writing your JavaScript. Uh, so we create an object called this dot Ajax URL. And the reason why we're doing this dot Ajax URL so that it's available to all the functions throughout this class. And we don't have to pass it inside of any specific function. So this dot Ajax URL is a, is a variable. So remember that from the previous video, when we do WP localized script, then you can pass the side config, which means these configuration will be created in form of an object. So this object will have these two properties and that object will be available to the main.js. And since load mode is inside of main.js, this function, this particular JavaScript, that's why side config will be available. So all we are saying is that get me the Ajax URL, which is this one, uh, so that we can make the Ajax request and then also get me the side config. And then we'll have the side config dot Ajax non. So this will have the nonce of it being passed from here from a PHP file. And then we're just getting hold of the load mode button saying jQuery. And then we are using the selector load more. So if you go down, if you do an inspect element, this is our load mode button that has an ID of load more. That's what we are trying to catch. Then we are doing init. So we're calling the init function. This is the function that we have created. Uh, we're just making sure that the load more button is available before we add an event, because if it isn't, if you are not on a page that is not available, we just want to return early. That's one of the best practices. Then we're adding an event on this load more button. We're saying when it's clicked, then call this handle load more post function. Now what happens over here? So take a look. So first of all, we are getting the page number uh, from that load more button. So what's the page? So you can see the data page is one currently. So that's what we're going to get. So we get the page number. If page number is not available, we'll just return. And then we increment the existing page value with one. So we say the new page value will be whatever the existing page value was. Uh, we increment that by one. Now, because this will be a string, that's why we're using pass in to make sure that it's converted to a number before we add it. Okay. Then we use jQuery.ajax. So if you remember from the previous episodes, that's how you make an Ajax request. You pass the URL. So that will be the URL, which is this one. And then that which is which is what we have declared on the top is this one. So it's available down at the bottom. Then type will be post. So this is a post request. Then we pass the data. So we pass the page number. We set the action to load more. Uh, if you haven't watched my previous video, uh, I recommend please go and watch that because I've explained all of these things in detail how this works. Okay, so we put the action name, we put the nonce. So the reason why we're passing nonce so that 
when this request is received on the server side, it can verify that whatever nonce was created here using WP create nonce, that nonce is passed here and then it's going to verify that. So notice that inside of the uh, AJAX script post load mode, which will be called when that AJAX request is made, is going to use the check AJAX referrer to verify that nonce, okay? So nonce is going to get passed and then once it's successful, once the request is successful, you're going to get the response. So then we check if the response is zero, then we just remove the load more button. So in case if there are no more posts available, then the response is going to be zero. So notice that we're returning the response as zero in the backend when no posts are available, which means once we finish loading all the posts, we don't want user to click on it because it's not going to do anything, right? So we just remove the load more button. Uh, so that's a JavaScript function to remove that particular element. Now, what we should actually do is, as best practice, make sure if before you remove a button, you should remove the event also. So then we're going to remove the event uh, that was applied before removing the button, okay? Otherwise, that event will stay in the memory, but the button will be removed, which is not a very good practice. But, but since we are not going to go with the approach of the load more, we're actually going to go to go for the infinite scroll. We're, go we're going to remove this click event later on anyways. Okay, so we're going to do that with the infinite scroll. All right. So I'll come back to that in, in some time. Uh, then if the response is not zero, which, which means the response is successful and we've got the post, then in that case, I'm just going to say load more button dot data and then page and then the new page number. So, so what this is going to do is whatever the existing value was there inside of the data page over here, right? Whatever the value was is going to increment that by one. Why? Because on top you're saying that whatever the existing value was increment that one. So the new value becomes two. So now the load more button data page value becomes two. So the next time it's clicked, we already have the number of the next page available, which means when the next request, next AJAX call goes, it knows that it needs to fetch the second page. So it can get the post for the second page. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we are setting that. And then finally, we're just saying load more content dot append using jQuery. So where is the load more content? So this is our, so this is our load more content. It already has all of these articles being listed. These are direct child of this particular div. So what this is going to do is, is going to append the response, okay? So whatever the response is, so response would generally have the articles and that is what is going to be appended here. So I'm going to show that to you in a moment. Okay, if there's any error, then we handle that right now. We're not doing anything. So that's all for now. Uh, let's go ahead and see if this works fine. So what I'm going to do now is, this is our button. Let's click that. And the moment you click that, notice what happens. Okay. It's going to append the articles from the next page, which is page two. So let's do that. Hit it. There you go. You can see that it's appended one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's appended six articles. And if you check the network request, you can see that the, there's an Ajax call made, which is this one. If you hit it. So that's the Ajax URL. And that's what is being passed over here. So that's the way the request is being made. And notice that is being passed from here. That's the path to your admin ajax.php, which I've already explained in the previous video. It is a post request. So this is the post request. Then you have the page number. So page number was being passed. It's initially it was one. So that's why it's passed one. Then the action name. So that's your action name. Then ajax nonce. So nonce was created from your PHP file using WP localized script. It was passed as an object to my load more, we have the Ajax nonce available. We pass that here and that's how it is available here. And then when it's successful, so it's gonna go over here. And because we have hooked this function to these two hooks, which is Ajax no priv and Ajax load more, which means on the logged in and logged out both situations, uh, this function is gonna get called. When this gets called, it's going to verify that particular nonce. And in this case, the nonce is valid. So it's going to move further. It's gonna check if this is an Ajax request. It's going to get the page number from the post page. So whatever data you're gonna pass over here is going to be available inside of the dollar underscore post. Why? Because this is a post request, right? This is a post request. So the data is going to be available here. Then uh, we just ensure we use filter bar to filter 
the result of this, okay? And then we get the page number here, and then we make a WP query, post per page is six, that's why remember we had six posts, six, art, six more articles that were displayed. And then it gets the page number, in this case it's one, makes a WP query, loops through all of the posts that we have received, calls the get template part function. And if you remember from the previous video, inside of the get template part postcard, which is right here, basically have the article and that's what we have in the response. And we're just having the image, the heading and links, etc. right? So that's the response. So that response is going to be available to you inside of the load more. So once we have the response available, we're just going ahead and appending that to the load more content. That's exactly what has happened. So if you go back and check in the network, in the response, you can see that that's the response. That's all the articles we have, right? So that's coming from that template when we are looping through it. So it's gonna loop through it and make sure it's gonna return the response, all right? So we get the response, we append that, and that's how we see more posts. Now if you want more, hit it again. Again, we've got the posts, right? Notice that again, there was a network call made and we've got the rest of the posts. And then if you check, we have more posts available, yeah? And this will continue on. You can just keep clicking and for as long as there are posts available, you can just keep going, yeah? So congratulations, everyone. We've just built the load more functionality. If you're happy with this functionality where you don't want the infinite scroll, you can just stick to it. But if not, if you'd like to have the infinite scroll feature, please continue watching. In the next video, we're going to talk about something really interesting, which is called Intersection Observer API. It's, so that's what we're going to use. We're going to know what it is in the next video, and then we're going to implement that so that the user doesn't have to click on the load more each time. All right. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And please do start my repository to support my work. Thanks to all the beautiful 380 people who have already started this repository. And please do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayyad. It's this one. And please do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Cody Tang. All right. So I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.